Good evening, we're live in the Bunkers Hill pub. This is the Cat's Whiskers podcast. Hello, welcome to the Bunkers Hill Pub in Hockley, right next door to the NIC. I'm John O'Bullard and this is this week's Cat's Whiskers podcast, podcast. And with me to discuss the heartbreaking cup exit to Cardiff and a fantastic four-point weekend for the Nottingham Panthers are Tina Taylor. Hiya. Adam Reddish. Hello. And Aaron Lord. Hello. So we're going to start with the Devils game, but before we do, just a reminder that if you are listening and want to get in touch with us, you can do. It's at Cats Whiskers TV. Tina will be monitoring social media tonight, so uh, if you've got anything to say about this weekend and hockey in general, just send us a tweet uh, at Cats Whiskers TV, and uh, we will discuss it if you've got any questions as well. Well, we're going to go all the way back to midweek on Wednesday night, the second leg of the Challenge Cup semi-final. Do we have to? Well, I'm yeah, afraid we do. I'm no. afraid we do. I'm afraid we do. No, make it stop. Of course, five-five in the first leg in Cardiff, Yay. all to play for in the second leg. But unfortunately, uh, it went to the devil's way in the end they came away with the... I thought you were going to say it went to the dogs <laughs> well it pretty much did but it went the devil's way in the end with a 4-3 victory Panthers scoring with Brett Bulmer with two and Ryan Horvat. but then Cardiff Devils with Haddad with a couple Martin and Pope and uh, Panthers were out and Cardiff were heading to Cardiff for the final against the Sheffield Steelers so Aaron, I'll come to you first. We kept, we did come out firing in that game, and to be honest, for 40 minutes it looked like there was only one winner. Yes, it did. Yes, um, I think obviously, you know, Bournemouth coming back, uh, I think it obviously had an effect on the crowd. And then, you know, I think you look at the fact that the goals that he scored on the night had an effect on him as well. You know, maybe the adrenaline was pumping for him and. That extra sort of step in his in his game, um, and he had a big part to play in the match. Um, but Jono, you just said, you know, about forty minutes there, and unfortunately, it's a sixty-minute game. It's a sixty-minute game, yeah. And for four, well, not forty, for fifty minutes of that game, we were on top and. You know, before you move on to, obviously, Adam and Tina to talk about it, I think the only thing I can say is for 50 minutes, we kept Cardiff at bay. They were at arm's length. Cardiff Bay? God, he's he's gone there, hasn't he? I see what you did He's literally gone there. Very quick for you, Johnny, sometimes, actually, (laughs) that is, so I'll applaud you. Um, Quicker than Diva got across his goal last night, but we'll come on to that later. (laughs) Coming off his long run. I, I hate to say it, but I think some Cardiff Devil fans, if, well, if there is any Cardiff Devil fans listening to this uh, podcast, would say, yeah, well, also quicker than what Kevin Carr got across to some <laughs> of the goals that he conceded. But um, look, I think um, you've totally lost me now with what you just said there. Uh, so I'm going to pass it on to Adam Reddish. <laughs> I mean, uh, Adam, I. I I've, I've said that that result hurt. It did hurt quite badly because, as I was just saying before, we come to expect this from Panthers every so often. But from this team, you sort of didn't expect that from this team. Well, yes and no, because I mean we've shown at various times this season that we can't hold a lead. 
you know, and it's that, that's nothing to do with yeah, Fenton. That's nothing to do with the fact that the players aren't trying or anything like that. There's just been instances in games this year where the game management has been quite poor, and we've got a lead, and it's we, we've sort of maybe taken our foot off the gas a little bit, or just made the wrong choices at key times. And on on Wednesday last week, it, it just <laughs> felt to me like Cardiff really surged in that third period. You know, they they knew it was like now or never and they, they really got us on the back foot and we were struggling to come to terms with that and um, you know, I think John Rowe took a silly penalty didn't he um, halfway through the third period and uh, you know that was the killer really that, that gave Cardiff all the momentum they needed to uh, you know, get back into the game so it was really really hard to take as you said a real bitter pill to swallow um, I think what made it more bitter was the fact that we were just completely in control for so much of the match you know I never felt that uh, you know, there's any moment in that game up till about the 50th minute where we were going to shoot ourselves in the foot. Perfect game management. But then, last 10 minutes, you know, that penalty obviously, and then Cardiff are getting desperate. You know, they're throwing guys forward. Uh, you know, they're, they're you know, taking chances and leaving gaps at the back. We had loads of chances to kill that game at 3 1. You know, loads of chances, and we didn't take them. And that's what's cost us eventually. You know, we needed to be more ruthless at 3 1. Cardiff make it 3-2 and from then you know it's a full on implosion yeah I, I was just I mean I think the thing that um, kind of rings true to me is listening to the coaches interviews afterwards and I think you know Andrew Lord kind of says you know after two periods we had to change something we had to do something different because we weren't getting anywhere you know the, the way that the you know the Panthers were playing and the way that we were performing meant that we weren't doing things right and I think that meant that obviously they changed in the third period and I think anybody watching that game saw that they changed their game they you know and then you listen to what obviously Tim Wallace said and yes they dumped the puck more they they, they obviously made our, our defence you know, turn a lot more and, and, and try and kind of just deal with the put more, as as you could say, and I, and we didn't deal with that. I think over the whole game, we 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 made many sort of defensive kind of lapses over time. So, you know, we got away with quite a few things over the whole 60, 60 minutes. But I just think at the end of the day, as as frustrating and as as sort of as angry as that kind of result and the way it just kind of ended it also gives you a a realisation of where maybe we are as an organisation and as where we are as a team and by team I mean as a director of hockey as as a head coach and then as players because I think Chris Ellis asked a very good question to Tim Wallace on Free Sports about how Cardiff have been together for, you know, four or five years. They're used to, you know, winning championships. They've won, you know, they've won league championships on the bounce. They've won league, you know, they've won cups. They've competed in the CHL. And I think the fact, one thing that, that really hit me listening to something that Chris Ellis said on Free Sports was since Corey Nielsen you know, Cor- under the Corey Nielsen era we were used to winning cups, championships however you want to describe them one league, plenty of playoffs, plenty of challenge cups but since you know, Corey, Le- Corey Nielsen left this club how much of a transition have we gone through and yes we were I would say 10 minutes away from being in that Challenge Cup final but maybe that will in some way actually help us in the future I don't know just want to pick up on one thing that Aaron said there um, that Cardiff have been together for a long time I mean, I think I made this comment on the night to you, Jono, but you know, Cardiff's roster is quite old, if you look at it. You know, they've got a lot of guys that are mid to late 30s, and I wasn't expecting them to be able to find that extra gear yeah. halfway through the third period. 
you know, I thought that they were pretty spent. You know, the way that we played, you know, we were making them skate and chase the pucks quite a lot. And uh, you know, I, I just didn't expect them to have anything left in the tank for that last 10 minutes. But, um, you know, they found a way to do it. And yeah, we made some mistakes. But, you know, you, you, you can't sort of, uh, you know, look past the fact that Cardiff's experience probably got them over the line there. Whereas some of our guys, they. Um, they might not have been in those positions before in this country. So, um, you know, it's something to learn from, you know, and I'd like to think that as Wallace, you know, learns as a coach, you know, he'll, he'll be able to sort of get that across in, in what he's telling the players from behind the bench, you know, next year in the Challenge Cup. I think for me, like, kind of finishing on that, that game is, for me personally, you knew what Cardiff were going to do in that third period. They played it pretty much all game. They were going to be physical they were going to dump it in and they were going to try and get away with anything that they could get away with and I think that is where we at times and I think you, you know you could kind of allow it to this team because of how new and potentially how young you look at the roster is that we I think at that last period last 10 minutes a little bit sort of a soft underbelly and Cardiff were going to throw everything out they were going to be dirt you know I say dirty but you know like niggly you know physical trying to get away with something if they can get away with it and I think at the moment we don't necessarily have that and we didn't have the experience to back that up and again this comes back to the whole kind of believing in the do set kind of way of building an intent and identity but I just think at that time that needed a it needed maybe a bit more grit a bit more dirtiness a bit more chest out deal with it sort of thing it's very hard you can't criticise the lads because they've tried everything and they've done everything they can over 60 minutes but you're trying to work out why you know Cardiff have somehow won that game in 10 minutes of a 60 minute game when we performed so well over 50 minutes. And TD, you watched the game on Free Sports, so mm. you, you got the benefit of replays and you yeah, know, other, not, other. Not that in the third period I actually wanted to watch any of them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how did it look on television? Because actually being live at the game, it looked like Panthers were in complete control. Was that coming across on TV as well? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, despite having bought my ticket, um, circumstances uh, were that I ended up at home watching it. Quite frankly, I was I was glad because I was able to have a little snuggle with my therapy dog. Mm-hmm. Uh, because over over everything else, I mean, I, you know, I mean, the guys have already talked about all the all the things that happened in the game, the things that went wrong, and all the rest of it. For, for me, it, it just hurt because I I I. I I, I got my belief back again. I got the hope back again because, you know, the slow start to the season that we had, it just kind of set me up for, a, you know, a, a, another long season, as it were. And, you know, the way, the changes that we've made, the new guys we've brought in and, the, you know, the positivity around the organisation has really, really got me, you know, back in, into the book. Essentially. It's inf- I think a, a lot of people have become invested again mm. that probably weren't bef- before. Uh, I think there's a lot of us around this table who, who were feeling like that. I know me personally, I, I was not feeling it. And I've s- already said that this team has rekindled my passion for them. Yeah, exactly. And so you know, we, we've, we've had a break from the, 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 the golden age of Corey Nielsen, you know, where we just kind of... We, we we were almost allowed to expect that we would win Challenge Cups and we would win playoff trophies, and we've had a, we've had a break from that, and, and we're no we no longer expect it. But the way that this team has has come through this season so far, I, I was almost I, was, I wasn't expecting it, but but I thought yeah this this team, the, you know this team can do it. This team can definitely do it. So when they didn't, you know after you know forty minutes of. of Dominance and being in the driving seat. That that last twenty minutes, I was absolutely crestfallen. I I just it hurt. It hurt so much. And I, I yeah. I, it, 
I, I, I can't, you know, the, you, you could see it on the players' faces. Yeah. It, not only did it hurt us, yeah, it hurt them as well. Yeah, big time, it hurt them, and you could see how much it, it, it upset them, which is another another thing that you know really does get you about this team you, you can see they, they care they absolutely give a monkeys about the results they're not just here for a jolly they are here to play hockey and that's what that's and that's what we want to see and that's why we're so invested in this team and that's why it hurt so much when we didn't get through to the Challenge Cup final I think we, we, we'll leave that one there and move on to happier times <laughs> and uh, a tweet I put out after the Devils defeat was it will be interesting to see the response that Panthers provide this weekend and I think we can all say what a response what a response a four point weekend after a huge disappointment which probably would have crumbled other Panthers teams not this one they go into Sheffield on Saturday night And that's what we'll talk about now and come away with an outstanding 5-1 victory. Uh, Goals for the Panthers from Tolbert, Hare, Malmquist, Pellini and Hansen. Tanner Eberle with the only Steelers goal. Also saw the debut of midweek signing Matthew Toussignon. And it... (laughs) Or or Dave as Aaron prefers to call him. But it's... I'll admit... Uh, I, I went out with Paul last night I wasn't expecting a victory last night I'll, 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 I'll admit that I wasn't confident and then as the goals started coming through uh, and the thing is previous games in Sheffield you think oh, okay we're 2-1-0 we're we're one, one up we're 2-1-up we're 3-1-up we're 4-1-up is, is it enough and then when it got to 5-1 I, actually when it was 5-1 I thought did you believe it? yeah yeah I thought yeah we're, we're going to do five this, one this now nine, plus text from my wife's wife who couldn't give us any credit it was because of course they were rubbish yeah, yeah I mean, never because we were any good um, but I, I was delighted I was so happy that they came away from that disappointment in midweek and produced a performance like that in Sheffield and getting a fantastic victory against a team who, who let's face it have been completely free scoring of, of late <laughs> Silence Aaron, just, yeah. <laughs> and Aaron had the floor and he just didn't want to take it well, um, no, I, just, I, I, I saw your look on your face as Tina is checking the live scores of the game so far um, but let's forget about that because there's still plenty of time left in that game Tina there's still plenty of time for yeah, Sheffield to take all two, all two points well, yeah, anyway yeah. Um, <laughs> no Jono um, talking about the Steelers game obviously um, look didn't get the webcast didn't go to Sheffield um, why would you <laughs> I usually like going I don't mind an away game and Sheffield is including that but um, look I think as you say you know you put that tweet out which I saw and I think I retweeted actually you know just for your benefit um, I'm not su- look okay I'll, I'll, I'll phrase this right before people say something but um I'm not surprised at the response that we gave. I'm potentially surprised at the level of the response that we Mm. gave. Okay, I'm not surprised that we bounced back. Whether that bounce back was going to be in a in a two point result or a one point result or just a general performance, I wasn't surprised. The fact we went there and won five one and like. I've listened to Aaron Fox's interviews. And to be fair to Aaron Fox, he, he, he gave us credit and said we, we, we were better. Well, he, yeah, he mentions the fact that like, they didn't win the 50-50 battles, um, things went wrong for them, and blah de blah de blah And, yeah, he didn't like, necessarily try and make an excuse. He, he said that it was a bad, bad night at the office and blah de blah But then I also listened to Tim Wallace's interview, and I just thought... I like everything that, you know, our coach has said in response yeah, to that. Yeah, he was clearly delighted at yeah, the, clearly the, delighted. the victory and the responses and the response yeah. and the performance. Yeah, exactly. And I think, you know, you can either kind of respond to our result on Wednesday night two ways. You can either kind of go with loss 
a massive game there and we can fold and we can sort of like hide away and, sh- and, and shy away from things or or you get back on the saddle and you and you go again and I think um, you know looking at the goals we scored some very nice goals um, and I think what the most pleasing for me is that everybody seems to talk about this kind of like hoodoo that Sheffield have against us that we can't beat them and I think stats wise yeah it's not the best in, in our favour so they have this kind of mental block against us that they you know they kind of have that mental advantage against us and I just think look at the end of the day we've gone there we've beaten 5-1 did they have a bad, uh, a bad day yes they, they properly did but that also seems to me that we had a very clinical day so do you know what we won the game it's two points against a potential title rival it's two points against a rival and as we head down the stretch you know that's that's all you can kind of ask for and I think it's good that there were different scorers on the night I think obviously you know Dave our new signing made a made a big impression and yeah you know the main thing for me after like hearing that result and looking at the goals on Twitter um, it's all about kind of following that up you know on the Sunday mm. isn't it I mean that Adam not only a pleasing result but to limit the most potent offence by far in this league to one goal was an, was another great performance and not many shots by all accounts 20, uh, 21 yeah. shots I think we allowed so, I mean that, that just shows that the D did a superb job last night and you know the back checking forwards as well you know limiting the space of Sheffield's forwards to cause you know too much trouble in our zone so you know it's, it's a great job I mean to go to Sheffield and only can see one with the sort of offensive prowess that they've got this season I think he's absolutely admirable and you've got to tip your cap to everybody concerned um, you know it's to put five on the board as well in Sheffield you know, not many sides do that this year and uh, you know, the goals that we scored there were a mixture of great goals and scrappy goals but you know we, we, it sounded like we took the game to them and um, that's what you've got to do I mean it would have been easy maybe to have um, gone into there after Wednesday's disappointment and you know play like you know, rabbits in headlights a little bit but we didn't you know we came out we showed what we were all about it was a real good confidence win you know we showed character that's the key thing showing character after that because I think you mentioned a few minutes ago that you know on, on the bounce back after a defeat like that in the Challenge Cup semi-final when we've you know, gifted the game almost to Cardiff you know uh, previous Panthers sides would have folded you know they, they just wouldn't have had that sort of mentality to go out there and, and stay strong so really good bounce back win for Panthers last night and um, sort of shows you what sort of character there is in the locker room you know the guys care Wednesday was a bit of an aberration but you know they, they bounced back and they did everything they could the following game which which is probably what Tim Wallace wanted he wanted the guys to go out there show that Wednesday wasn't them and wasn't what they were all about and, and they went into probably the building of the hardest team to come out with a win and got a win so well well done everyone you know fair play um, and you know as we'll talk about in a few minutes time set us up really nicely for, for the game today I tell you what you could maybe say about the performance on Saturday is when we talk about you you ask what reaction would you get you know from the team you got a reaction maybe Jono that um, the lads don't believe that the league title's already won yeah I, I, I think you've got a point there with you know as, as okay I'm a guy that's go, go, gone into that locker room you know Thursday Friday whenever it is you know maybe I had a day off on the Thursday to sort of you know just accept it and stuff like that or maybe they went in on Thursday you know who knows but do you know what you got you got the reaction there do you know what league title ain't over we might have lost out on one league you know one cup one one title but do you know what ain't over and I'm all for that and I think that's what this team you know this team has given that this year I mean Tina some cracking goals scored by the Panthers last night some absolute belters 
and also two power play goals. Witchcraft, I tell you, witchcraft. Because absolutely, I, I'm sorry, if I hadn't seen it happen myself on the highlights, I would not have believed it. I mean, we, we have had, and we still continue to have, quite frankly, a god-awful power play, but... <laughs> If we're going to score two two goals on the power play, who better to, to stick the knife in against it? You know, than our nearest and dearest. So you know, happy days. But um, yeah, special mention for me for Brett Pellini's rocket. That one was an absolute stunner of a goal. Um, I, th- I think um, you know Talbot clearly enjoyed his goal. Um, there was also on the highlights a, 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 another another breakaway for Ollie Betteridge. I mean, he is uh, you know he, he's, he's still continuing to absolutely dig away um, so you know even even when the goals aren't coming the shots are still coming um, yeah so it so yeah it, it was wonderful because I I, I, I my, my better thing to do other than watching the uh, webcast yesterday was uh, spa afternoon thank you very much really enjoyed myself and switched my phone on after that and I made my face I made a face that my sister has never seen before so um, yeah because I just couldn't uh, I couldn't quite believe what I was seeing a win away in Sheffield is um, yeah it's massively unexpected massively unexpected so yeah really really uh, enjoyed watching that I've enjoyed watching the goals back uh, not to be sniffed at absolutely not um, I mean I would I would like to, I would have liked to have th- thought that the it with two power play goals being scored last night that we might have turned a bit of a power play corner but unfortunately it didn't seem to come through tonight yeah like Tina was talking about you know Talbot for there and that that rang a bell for me and um I had a friend, a Sheffield friend, I know, shocking, um, that actually texted me that, after, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm married to one, come right, on. Exactly. This is what, this I play top trump. Yeah, exactly, yeah. You've won. Um, but, but it said, I can't understand the, to- the Talbot signing. I don't get how you managed to sign Julian Talbot. And I was like, well, I don't really know how to answer that. I was like, he's very good at face-offs. Um, he's doing very well for us, and I'd re-sign him tomorrow. Mm. And they were like, but he should have signed for Sheffield. What, just because his brother played? And I was like... Him. And we had, we had a long conversation. <laughs> okay, wrong with you. But I just, you know, Tina mentioned him, and I just thought, <laughs> I just thought that was kind of quite funny, really, because at the end of the day, don't get me wrong, you know, he has been a massive, massive... Improvement in our for, in our fortunes, and I hope we are re-signing him tomorrow, I, if I, not already re-signed. To be I, I, I would totally agree, totally, utterly agree with that. Um, we'll leave Sheffield there uh, and move oh, on. We not just talk about like longer how we beat on five one. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, the thing the thing that was noticeable for me, especially on social media, is how. A lot of their fans came on all going, oh, but look at the gap, oh, where's your Challenge Cup ticket? It clearly yeah. hurt their fa- it clearly hurt their fans because they came on, they came onto Twitter and were, was mocking Wednesday and was was saying about the gap, and it's just like, well, that's well, clearly have, hurt you then. Yeah, a million How? games more than everybody else at the top of the table. So you know, if if they lose tonight and they're losing at the moment, six five, Danny Guildford, um, that sort of blows the. Uh, you ruined it, Adam. You I said if. It. I said if. I use that word. Um, but I mean, if that result stands, then I think the top of the table is really open again. I'd always want points on the board rather than games in hand because you know it, it, they're just there. You've done the hard work. You've got the points, but. You never know, do you? Yeah, you, know, you just never know, and it might be something that you ask us about later in terms of Panthers and whether they're still in the title hunt or not. But uh, yeah, I think it did sting them last night. It did, and they had like more than eight thousand people in the building. So you know, big crowd, big crowd in the House of Steel. Is it still called the House of Steel? John, I'm, I'm looking at you for this because you're a wrestling Sheffield expert. <laughs> I haven't been for two years. I think so. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, anyway, they, had a, they had a near sellout, and their team lost five-one at home to their local rivals. Not good, but you know, good for us. Good character win, and um, here's to the next five-one win in Sheffield, which hopefully won't be too long away. Moving back to the original question, Johnny, that you posted. Um, 
Uh, I find it embarrassing that there's actually Steelers fans who their team has top of the league justifiably scored plenty of goals this year actually trying to like the first thing they tweet is like bad things against the Panthers mm. trying to but like they're not obsessed yeah exactly and they're like oh it's just ridiculous you lost against us we were the better team on the night move on you're still in t- you know I'd rather be in your position than our position yeah. Don't the thing wrong. is they are they are a great side they're, they're <laughs> It, 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 take away the fact it's Sheffield they're bloody great to watch entertaining play great hockey if, if they weren't in that orange shirt I would love watching them three words Jono mm. table doesn't lie thanks Neil Russell <laughs> <laughs> ding I miss you, I miss you coach <laughs> alright let's move on to tonight's game and I, I think we'll all agree it's it, it was instantly forgettable I mean <laughs> <laughs> tonight but but Jackson Whistle getting the start and getting a shut out which will be great for his confidence uh, and also you know, a 2-0 a two victory two, two more points a four point weekend we really couldn't ask for any more than that even though maybe Tina the goals were a bit gift wrapped yeah, a little bit. Um, I, genuinely, I think Adam Morrison should get uh, credited with an assist for that first goal because uh, what a haul he made of that behind the net. Um, that I absolutely gifted, gifted the goal. Um, and to be honest, y- you could kind of feel the collective sigh of relief around the NIC because nil-nil for two periods and you're just sort of like... Oh, you, 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 I, I imagine there's people with no fingernails left, you know? I mean, you, it's just... It's, and, and to be fair, I think five were... Honestly, pretty awful in the first period, but then started to gain in confidence, I felt, as the game went on. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they the more it went on, and it was goalless, the more that they, they grew in their confidence. It, it, you could see it. You know, they were playing a bit more free, and they weren't getting too frustrated. You know, there was like the odd penalty here and there that they didn't agree with, obviously. But, you know, they really... And the well, as you might as you might have heard, um, Guildford have uh, have sealed the Sheffield uh, zero point weekend. Uh. Well, the the other thing, the important just to go on to that, that now puts the league title back in our own hands mm. because we needed other results. Now we sh- with us having a four point weekend and Sheffield having a zero point weekend, four four games in hand. Which, if we win them all, we we'll go a point ahead. Plus a game against Sheffield, we go. You know, it, it's it's possible. It's on again. Have we have we have we skipped talking about five tonight? Have we? <laughs> well, no. I'm just sort of, we'll as someone shouted the result, it just let's come, back. Let's, let's come back. let's come back to five. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's come back to five. Um, yeah, we won't we'll remember it because we, we won't remember it for it's <laughs> long, will we? No, no, it's not good. As, again, as you say, not going to live long in the memory. And um, yeah, I mean, the the, the, the first goal was um, yeah, f- first goal was get round gift wrap by Adam Morrison. Second one, I, I don't know what Paul Crowder was doing. I have absolutely no idea what he thought he was doing because Hanson was just like picked his pocket. It, oh, is, is that the puck? Oh, I'll, I'll just have that. Thanks a lot. Empty net. Off you go. Um, but it, it could have so easily gone the other way because, as I say, the more that Five continued to keep us off the score sheet, the the worse it the worse it got for for us. The feeling for me was that they could have they absolutely one hundred percent could have nicked it. And if if they'd have got the first goal, I think we'd, we'd be having an entirely different conversation around this table tonight. Frankly. Apologies if you heard any choice language <laughs> <laughs> a while ago. Yeah, well, to be fair, Catfish and the Bottle Men were on earlier with the, uh, the unedited um, whatever it is, uh, you know, um, forget it if they talk or whatever. Anyway, so, so we, might have to, we, we might have to belatedly tick the explicit content tonight. Um, so Jackson Whistle getting a start and it's something we, we have said yes finally finally getting a start um, fair play he didn't have a, a massive amount to do but what he did do was great and he gets a deserved shutter yeah I think um, if Jackson Whistle hadn't have started tonight's game then I don't think he would have ever started <laughs> another game for us this season to be honest it was it's been a 
it's been a conversation that I've had with many people. Um, not you, Adam. No, not you. Because Why have you I, not had a conversation about it. Well, because I didn't want to talk to you about it. <laughs> in all honesty, it's quite simple, really. Um, but look, at the end of the day, you, I would love to know, and Johnny, you might provide me with this stat. Um, Team of stats, woman. No guarantees. I've got it. Go, go. Let, let's uh, hear it. When let's hear it Jackson first. Whittle's last start was. Oh, Con- Continental Cup. Domestic. Domestic start. start. Oh, don't do things like that. I believe. It, w- was he in goal in the 3 0 victory away in Manchester just after I, New Year? I, I hear that because I think I've read that. But also, I'm going to throw another stat at yeah? you. Oh, when was the last time he actually started a game at the NIC? Uh, That's a very good question. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure at all. While you try and find that out, what Hang I'm going to say is look, at the end of the day, I think. You know, Jackson Whistle, it's been a very topical oh, conversation. 4th of January against the Stars. At home? Yes. Oh, okay, so, you, to, so you're nearly talking a, you're nearly yes. talking a month. Yeah. A month since, since, month since he started it. And I'm, I'm, I'm asking that question purely because of starting a game, I think, in your home arena, under your home fans, is very different to starting an away game, you know, when you're already up against the sort of, you know... Challenge as it was. Um, I don't think he had a lot to do tonight, but as you said, Johnny, what he had to do, he did very well. Um, I think he needed that game. Um, I'm glad he got that game. I think on five, I mean, I, I, I don't know what's gone on in five this year because five used to be somebody that were troubling for fourth place, five place. Oh, oh um, all right, trigger. <laughs> um, it's quite sad to see where they actually are because for me tonight they look toothless. You might say in the in the second period they like gained more sort of, but they were toothless. Like I don't think they ever looked like they were going to score a goal, and I think that's quite sad actually because they they were a team that you know don't get me, like a few years ago they made the final four for playoff weekend and you thought they had a chance they've always like something's gone wrong with them this year I mean I, I got a question on Periscope about them this week and I do you I, do a Periscope I do and uh, they That's news to me I just <laughs> and, and it was, was what what you thought what's wrong with Fife and I just I said, Fife are a sleeping giant they should be challenging every single year in, in my opinion they've got the barn to do it a hostile barn which Teams don't like playing it that they could use to their advantage, and they tend to, they've got a lot of quality players there. To be fair, but they're just not performing to their potential they at look, all. No, they I just think, look toothless. I, I'll, I'll be honest. I, I I think Dutian's time is coming to a, rapidly to a close. I, 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 I mean, well, yeah, I, I'm, I'm sure he is. But the thing is, he's been there so long. Yeah, yeah. He's he's just part of the furniture. And we've we've you know, I, I think when Corey Nielsen left us, I think we all knew it was time. And you've just got to know when when to call that yourself. You, yourself, I mean, Dutian. That, that that's in Dutian's hands, I think, to to a certain extent. But the fans are getting so fed up with what's going on. I mean, if you look at their attendances, it's awful I mean well, yeah, my, the, my um, attendance blog that I've started doing every year I mean when I do that that's going to be a massive that's a massive drop in, in average per game attendance I mean their, their last game um, barely barely scratched over a thousand in attendance that's terrible for them that that's that's nothing like what it used to be. You know, they used to they used to practically fill that place, and it's just not happening anymore because the fans are just fed up of seeing just seeing a team that is is not doing you know as uh, nearly as well as they could do. I mean, this I mean this season is is exceptional for them. Being bottom of the table, that's exceptionally bad. That's that's enough to, to, to you know drive anybody, you know, even the most ardent of fans, to you know to not want to turn up. But you know, the, I mean, yes, I, I I agree with what you what you said earlier um, about them, you know, about them being a sort of a mid-table 
mid-table team. Um, yeah, they yeah they normally are, and they normally get themselves in a in a, in a good place for playoffs. You know, they yeah. normally get themselves a good game for playoffs. They're, 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 that, that, team no ain't make, that team ain't that team making playoffs. No, they've got they've got no hope. We are not going to see them in play, playoffs this season. If they're not careful, then they. I, 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 I would hate to see it, but I can, I can see imports getting fed up in the moment in Edinburgh style exodus. Yeah. Five Flyers used to be that team that you used to try and avoid mm. in the playoffs. Mm. Yeah. Because whatever you might think you might get at home, <coughs> when you went up there, which used to be on a well, yeah, well, we played we, on a Sunday night. We we played them in the playoff quarterfinals last year, and I I, I was at the game because I was working up in Scotland, so I managed to get to the game, and it was raucous yeah, in that building. I mean. like, it was raucous. Yeah. <laughs> so that was a team that, when you look at where you want to finish in the top eight, because they were always guaranteed to fin- finish in the top eight, you go, well, I don't want to go up there on a Sunday. I don't want to go up there on a Sunday. You might be one nil up or two nil up or whatever. But you knew when you went up there on that Sunday, you'd have a full cry- a crowd behind them, and like you just said, be absolutely raucous. Mm. The one time I've been up to five, and don't get me wrong, I absolutely loved being up there, but by God, you know you're in for a game. Mm. And I just think they're going through a, a season maybe that every club goes through at some, at some stage. But they are going through a season that they'll want to forget because they ain't making the playoffs now. Adam, I'll come to you and Panthers new signing uh, Matthew Toussignon, the Dave. or Dave as David Dave. Yeah, yeah. Aaron will henceforth be known as Trigger. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I know by me. <laughs> he endeared himself to the fans tonight, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He seems like a little bit of a character, you know, a bit of a rogue, a lovable rogue. Um, a fight on his home debut. I mean, blimey, <laughs> yeah, that's one way to a fight. Is I yeah. mean, they're, they're a rare team. They are, yeah, exactly, you know, yeah. They're all very rare these days. So you know, it's good to see him get involved. You know, get the gloves off, drop the gloves, and uh, get stuck in. Um, yeah, I mean, look, it's it's early days. We we know that he's a bit of a you know a bit of an energy player. You know, guy that likes to entertain the fans. Bit of a spark there. You know, gets fans off the edges of their seats. Um, you know, it remains to be seen what he sort of can contribute hockey-wise, as it were. You know, in terms of goals and assists as a forward, but you know, he certainly looks like he's a bit of a spark plug for the rest of the roster. You know, try and get the other guys to play. If you're on the same line as him, you know, he might, he might, you know, bring about uh, some some chances because you know he'll get into the heads of the opposition. He, he looks like one of those players that might, you know cause other players from the other side to lose their heads and you know not uh, not do what they're meant to be doing out on the ice which is good because it just means that you know we get opportunities to score you know good good goal scoring opportunities etc so yeah um I mean, we've not really had a player like that for a while. Someone that's a bit larger than life, you know. Someone that, uh, you know, likes to interact with the fans, as it were, and um, you know, put on a bit of a show for the fans. So, as I said, though, you know, before this podcast started, he's got to back heel with hockey ability because you know, if you just go around and you know, goof it up a little bit by you know getting involved in fights and smiling to the fans, that, that's all well and good. But you know, let's see what you've got to offer with your stick, and let's see. Uh, Let's see what you can do, you know, actually as a forward to contribute to the team's offensive output. So, you know, early days yet. Um, he's, he's, I think, coming back from injury. And that's probably why he's not scored too many points so far this season where he was playing. But he's scored a lot of points in DEL. He has scored a lot of points in DEL2. DEL2. And, you know, if you score points at DEL2, you know Mug because it is a strong competitive league and you know you could argue that it's it's probably about as competitive as the elite league maybe a little bit more so so you know the, the, the guy knows his hockey you know he's um, he's, he's, he's sort of like no uh, no hanger on her but um, yeah I look forward to seeing what he can contribute for the remaining games of this season and he might just be that sort of player that you know that galvanises the, the roster you know just brings a little bit more out from the guys in the locker room uh, because they know they can go out there and, and he's got their back. So, yeah, um, at the moment, it's still early days, but I'm looking forward to seeing what happens in the next few matches. Yeah, I think the only thing that um, not concerns me, but I just I, I, I just hope he can rein it in, 
Um, fight, fight aside, um, I, fight aside, I think I would like to see him rain in the penalty minutes because well, that in interference Ch- call yeah. tonight was silly. You know, yeah, he, he yeah, didn't yeah. need to do that. And yeah. you know, at that stage in the game when I think it was one nil, wasn't it? And he yeah. put five on the power play. You know, with about five or six minutes left. He didn't need to take that penalty. Yeah. You know, we're around Morrison's net. Yeah. And, you know, that is, that's, that's just a brainless thing to do. Now, it might have just been that he was... <laughs> Uh, the, the adrenaline was pumping because it was his home debut and it, he sort of got that bit of a spark and got he's shown that he got that little bit of affinity with the crowd but you know you've got to be hockey smart and you can't do that at that stage of the game and hopefully Wallace just maybe had a little word in his ear um, after the game to say you know just be a bit smarter than that mate um, because you know you, you've, you've got to you've got to do what you need to do to get the win and going on the penalty kill you know with a few minutes left um, you know could have threatened our two points tonight so you know it, it's just all about being sensible and yeah okay if he's going to be a bit of a character and uh, you know drop his gloves and you know just be a bit of a general irritant for opposing teams that's fine but you know you, like you said Tina you've got to draw a line somewhere and, and just rein it in and, and keep your emotions in check when it matters most well, yeah no I mean what, what, what I was uh, the, the quick point I wanted to make is that he's, he's taken 13 penalty minutes in two games. I mean, take the fight out of that if you want or, or not. Uh, but that's, that's still quite a lot of penalty minutes to concede for me. So, yeah, I, I hope Wallace is having, is having a word because um, I, I would very much like to see him uh, go go more towards you know, if he's going to continue to try and entertain and what have you I'd prefer to see him go more towards the side of David Ling than to the side of Joe Grimaldi <laughs> that, that, that's pretty much the last thing we want so um, you know I, 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 I'm, I'm all for it I'm definitely all for it if he, want, if he wants to you know because we need somebody who can who can do a bit of agitating and winding up without you, you know without taking the penalty minutes and without you know causing a, a detriment to the team can I just make a really quick point? I mean, he is still new to the league, very new to the league. Um, he doesn't know the game, he doesn't know the league, he doesn't know the quality of the refs or the standards that you know they have. Um, so I'm sure over the next few games, he'll quickly come up to speed about what he can and what he can't do. And I'm sure Wallace will tell him as well, you know, the situations where he's allowed to maybe go out there off the leash, as it were, you know, just uh, well, off the lead, not off the leash. Um, and you know, just get out, get up to a bit of general. I don't know, general naughtiness. I, 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 just, I know the word that you're looking for, yeah. but we're not going to say it. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, we're a family podcast, podcast, yeah. whatever. Can I, can I just, can I just say, we are now in the year 2020, yeah, and we are still mentioning Joe Grimaldi. <laughs> it's disappointing. Cena. It's disappointing. Cena. You've let us so you've let me down there. You really are. He's trading off this publicity. Oh, he's trading off God. it. <laughs> anyway, his his blog is due to be released in 2031. If anyone wants to. And Aaron's um, written a foreword for it. <laughs> reg- reg- regarded Dave as as he is now known. Um, Trigger. <laughs> um, Tina was talking obviously about like um, pe- penalty minutes and how it. it I, th- I, I think these two these two games that he's had, he's had a massive impact. Don't get me wrong. He got man of match tonight. Whether that was, you know, due, I'm not too sure really. But uh, fair play, I, I, I felt Jackson Whistle should have well, got it. But, but exactly, but I could sort of understand why yeah, he waited. Does, does, does from a shot out? Well, I don't think so. I, does ev- does any man of the match at you know the NIC actually? Materialised to the right decision. I don't really know. So you know, whatever. He enjoyed himself. I think the biggest thing that I can say about you know Matthew Dabdzada Tusignon Tusignon. Okay, and Matthew Tusignon. Crying out loud, Aaron! Now, messy Steph to get the pronunciation. From and what is it then? Go on. Tusignon Tusignon. Mm. Okay. Well, yeah. I'm just. I know, but I'm just saying. It, in block 15, we decided to call him Dave. <laughs> yeah, I'm just carrying that on. Um, but you know, um, I think the impact that he's had is obviously massive. You can see it's given a lift. I think his character is obviously, you know, the biggest thing that you can say. And all I would say is that the Panthers as a whole, I think, have missed characters. 
And I would say when we've had characters, we've been successful. Now, I agree with what has been said before, is that as long as that character doesn't override talent, togetherness, you know, but what I would say is I listened to his first interview that he did on Panthers TV and he said that how it was a tight-knit group and he just wanted to slot right in there. You can't ask any more. And at the end of the day, I mean, look, let's be honest. He went to Sheffield, not met his teammates very often, went there and apparently, according to Peter Spence from BBC Sheffield, caused a right up roll with a couple of their players. Hey, mate, it's going to be a winner for me. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's leave Panthers, Panthers there. Um, so other other news and results, and the title race has probably been blown wide open this weekend. A double header in Bel- <laughs> boom, a double header in Belfast, uh, which saw the Giants win one nil on Saturday night, and then tonight the Devils winning one nil. Well, so that's that's, I mean, that's a tight I mean, that's a tight how series. Blair Riley feel. <laughs> I mean, does he feel happy or does he feel sad? I mean, I don't know. (laughs) Does he wish he'd gone? Does he wish he stayed? Who knows? Only one people know. (laughs) You only get them on this podcast. And, of course, we've already mentioned the Sheffield Steelers with a zero-point weekend. uh, uh, With a zero-point weekend. That's a zero-point weekend for the Sheffield Steelers. Well, welcome, rest of the league. A zero-point weekend for the Sheffield Steelers. Let's say it again. No points for the Sheffield Steelers (laughs) this weekend. Can you just repeat that? They didn't win a game. Oh, really? So... That's news to me. Um, can we just put a and caveat, a four, and a caveat out here that if Sheffield Steelers do go on to win the league, this was never recorded. <laughs> we can we can edit this bit out. We can edit it out, yeah. <laughs> but Panthers with a four point weekend and Woo-hoo! it's it's game on again, isn't it? After looking let's let's be fair, we all thought that Sheffield were completely running away with it. And then this weekend has Chuck Tuckley thrown it back up in the air again. Do you know what? I think 100% agree with you there, John. It's thrown it right back into the mix. But as a Panthers fan, and I'm going to let everybody else discuss this, because that's the kind of guy I am. But oh it kind of shows you. Do you know if you look back over the season, I'm going to throw the question out there that if, if we had this team at the start of the season... Do you reckon we'd be in number one? I I, I I think we'd be in the I think we'd be in the top two. I do, I do. You know, do you I, think what, we'd what? be number one, Johnny? That was my question. It, it's all hypothetical, so it's Why very it? because it is hypothetical because we didn't have this team at the start of the season. I, 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 and, and also because we're Panthers fans, we're never ever going to say that we're going to win it until we've won it. <laughs> What I'm trying to say is that I think, like, you look at the results, and if, don't get me wrong, Sheffield are the best team at the moment. You can over the league and stuff like that. There's no doubt about that. But you look at Cardiff results, you look at Belfast results, you look at our results. Don't get me wrong, but I think like people will go like there will be for me there will be Cardiff fans going oh well if we won that game if we did this. Both our fans, if they, you know, they'd say this, they'd say this. For me, I think the thing about us is we have had a massive change this season. We had a massive change of how we recruit players because we went down the director of hockey, Guy Doucet, and then we employed a, a head coach, which I think nobody would ever have picked out the hat. It was left field. Left field. But then what happened was we had a terrible start and absolutely, there's no denying how bad our start was, right? But then, okay, what did our management do? Our hockey management do? I'm going to say hockey management do. Changed it about. And since then, as before when we lost, who did we lose against? We, lo- we lost against oh, what Sheffield at home, at, I don't know, a team at home. Uh, we play and Tim Wallace came out and I and I absolutely love this. He went we've won twenty five to thirty games on the bounce or we've performed in twenty five to thirty games on the bounce. We've took points out of twenty five to thirty five thirty games where potentially you won't win that. So you've got to look at where we are and when we made the changes and stuff like that. 
And I just think, right, this team, this group of players, the coaching staff deserve a bit of credit that we are here now. Yes, we had a crap weekend last weekend. An absolute <gasps> adult content on is, <laughs> is crap really bad. No, no, you're right. We, we had a terrible weekend last weekend, absolutely awful. And then this, which gave the advantage to everyone else, now we've had a great weekend and sort of gained that advantage back. But this is the elite league. Do you know what I mean? It's, this it's is close, what it's all and about. it shows how close I mean? it is. Like, yeah. Anybody, anybody that believes we are we are out of a title race is is bonkers. Are we favourites to win it? No, we're not favourites to win it. Do we have to, do we have a chance to win it? Yeah, of course we have a chance to win it. Have we got a long way to go to win it? Yeah, of course we have. But isn't this fantastic that we're here now, second of February, talking about potentially us being involved in a title race I mean yeah. it's, it's crazy and as much as you can you know like put fault at our club as which many people do uh, you know this podcast included we've gone out we've made changes we've, we've made a change and we've brought a guy in at the moment which has had a massive impact which is I'm not saying you know Dave's resulted in this getting four points but he's played he's played a part yeah. and that's all you can ask for and I think there's a long way to go you know I think the break will do everybody good don't get me wrong I think the whole, the whole elite league could, could, well, well yeah I think that, I think that, that's what I was going to say because it, the, the, no, that's, that's going to be an advantage to the Steelers yeah. we're also you know carried Adam Deutsch 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 you know that's that's a big that's a big thing for us because our, our D before he was injured, we had the best D and the best. Still, still have we still the, we're still the only team in the elite league to concede less than hundred goals. There you go. Well, you know, every team at this stage of the season is going to be beat up to one degree yeah, or another. Course, you know, there'll be knocks being carried, there'll be knocks being managed. You know, injuries that are you know strapped up and guys being sent out there to you know ice minutes when they really shouldn't be icing minutes. But yeah. I, I know we had a really lousy start this season, but you know I can sort of understand that because yeah. there was so much change, yeah. and you know it was it was sort of like a complete new start for everybody involved at the Panthers. And okay, I'm, I'm sure I'm sure Wallace is a little bit regretful that we didn't win more games early doors, and we were like really down the league standings and like looking up to everybody else. And yeah, and as a as a humble fan. You sort of see where we were after about 15 games. It was like we should be doing a hell of a lot better. And if we'd only won maybe three or four more games, then we would be right there in the mix. But I think my my view is that things had to be bad for Wallace to realise that he needed to make changes. And and the, the one difference between this season and previous seasons was you know Wallace was given the ability by Doucette to go out there and make those roster changes and that, that, that's the key thing we, we upgraded you know we, we realised where you know the players were slightly deficient and Wallace said right I want new guys because I want us to be you know a, a more aggressive force in the league and you know the, the guys that we brought in Tolbert who's been a revelation oh, as far as I'm concerned massive. You know, that to me shows that the club are doing what they need to do to be challengers. And if we fall just short this season because of a bad start, yes, it'll be annoying and yes, I'll be sore about it for a few months. But it means that I feel in a better position ahead of next season because we won't make that bad start at the start of next year. We'll be ready to go right from the outset and we will be up there for the whole season. And, you know, if we're not for whatever reason... Thankfully now, the club's culture is that you know we can make that change at short notice, get rid of someone that's underperforming, and bring somebody in that's really going to help the team. I will only say one thing. Johnny, you tweeted one week ago, two weeks ago, that this team has reinvigorated or my, my passion. reignited yeah. your passion mm. for this club. Mm. How many people feel exactly the same as what you do, well, well the, think, ge- the gentleman to your left for a start. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. And I think 
yes, we might not go and win the league title this year. But a lot of people have been. But a lot of people have been impressed, yep. excited, liking, loving, accepting, however you want to kind of describe it. But, you know, yeah, we're there. We're, 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 we're involved. We're, you know, and I, I, for me, I'm going to throw my... I'm go- that's down to that's down to Guy Doucet you know Guy Doucet for me deserves a lot of praise because I think it's a hard it's a fresh role for the Panthers never been never been in the Panthers you can't say like you've gone and said right okay learn from that guy over there you know go and spend two weeks four weeks whatever and it also yeah it deserves credit for Tim Wallace as well because together as a hockey operation They've worked out what doesn't work and what does what what they want to get from it, and I just think you know I said this to our WhatsApp group earlier on, like you know a few days ago, I said I think Gideon Set will work out to be a fantastic director of hockey or whatever he his official title will be, but I just think the fact that you said you've been you know this team has reignited your passion for the Nottingham Panthers I do not think you're alone and I think that is a massive thing going into next season yeah I'm no stats person the person to my left is a stats person on the podcast but if you were to do a form table from the end of October early November I think we'd be top wouldn't we We'll be there, or there or thereabouts yeah. with, with Sheffield. I think, us, uh, but us, us and Sheffield, I think, yeah. are, since the end, since the end of October, are miles ahead yeah. of everybody else. Absolutely. Miles ahead. And you know, all you can do is learn from your mistakes. And you know, we might have recruited a roster, or Wallace might have recruited a roster that you know on on paper looked good, but then you know you don't see the pay, you see the players play on paper, do you? So you know. 10, 15 games he saw that a couple of guys weren't really performing okay you know some might have left because of other issues away from hockey but be that as it may we upgraded so you know the guys that left the players that replaced them have been better and that's all you can ask for as a fan to see that commitment to continuous improvement for the roster hey, and Aaron wants to talk again no, and, and poor Tina no, has been Adam, waiting to talk Adam, about Adam, this for years the thing is Adam's saying things that makes me want to say something so I just oh. think moving up my last thing will thing is, if, if our club wants to progress from this season to next season we're going to have to spend a little bit more money yeah I would agree yeah, I would agree totally I, I, ju- I just have one thing to contribute based on what I've, I've heard from um, Adam and Aaron yeah yeah for, for the last three days where I haven't actually had the chance anyway but the, just, the, just the one thing I, I want to say is that I think there'll be a, a change in culture on recruitment and I think that's a positive thing and I think no and I, no, and I think that any imports coming in in the future will be will, will be aware that poor performances will not be accepted yeah. by the Nottingham Panthers anymore. We've we've had we've had players before who have coasted. They've been here for a jolly. You can tell when they've been here for a jolly. But and, and players who who think you know, who come in have a great season and then have not such a good season the following year. I mean, I I, I, I don't want to I don't want to pick on him for being anything you know anything other than a, you know a, a good player. But Luke Pither comes in for half a season as an absolute stormer, all crying out for his re-signing. Second year, a little disappointing. And I think under this this structure of management now, I don't think Luke Pither makes a full second season. It's all about performance management, you know. And I think Guy Doucet is the sort of guy that will be really analysing what each player brings to this team. You know, I know we've got a, a hockey analyst, haven't we, at the club? Yes. Yeah, so, you know, him working with Guy Doucet hopefully will be looking really closely at whether players are doing what Wallace expects them to be doing. And if not, and if they fall short... You know, you get a warning, you get a kick up the you know what, and if they still don't respond to that, they're out the door. We need that sort of culture that's been in Sheffield for years, and Cardiff as well for years, where if you ain't cutting the mustard, you're out the door. And Aaron disagrees with me. But don't you're... leave, stop talking again! <laughs> <laughs> 
We'll move on because we've got other bits on the yeah. agenda. So Steelers, of course, playing the Devils in the Challenge Cup final, a whopping nine-one victory against the Glasgow clan on aggregate. I it was even myself. <laughs> Uh, also, other news uh, coming out. We saw an EH, AIHL tweet in play car- clarification of Cardiff's goal today. Yeah. Obviously, coming from the new situation room, big, big improvement. Yeah, I was massively surprised by that. And I, I watched it and then I was like, I need to watch this again because I'd. I'll be honest, I didn't fully understand it really. I was like, what, what's going on here? Like, um, But. I then watched it and watched it and watched it and then um, I mean it's just the way that the league's if the way if, if it's the way the league's going then fair enough but my concern is that are you going to provide that for every every game that's on that night that's a massive task and like I also thought, do we actually need that? I don't. I, I, on a social, yeah. on a, from, from, from a transparency and, and openness point of view, yes, I think we do. All the leagues so, do on, it on a social media point point of view. No, on a, on a transparency point of view. But on a social media point of view, well, do you need to? Well, 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 where else are they going to put it? Show it on the highlights. Yeah, but it's an instantaneous thing. Something's happened in that game where a goal has been reviewed, yeah. and they've gone. We need to show why this was given. And I, yeah. I, I like, so, I like so my that. My thing is right. Okay, so tonight's game, they questioned to the first goal tonight. Or they, 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 it was a review. It was a review, not, and they reviewed it. Obviously, no goal. So why is that not on that elite league stream? Because as Steph said, it didn't cross the line. So I think that's pretty self-explanatory. I think something like that yeah, they, that was probably contentious. Well, no, 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 no. You either do it or you don't. Well, you know, but this this involves um, because I think Belfast thought that the goal should have been disallowed yeah. because of goaltender interference. Yeah. However, it turns out it's the goalie. No, the, 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 the goalie was the one who is, initiated the, the contact. Right. What, what I don't know is was it a coach's challenge, yeah, which, so may, where, where, may, where, where, which may which may be different. It, I don't think so where's where, so, right? Okay, so the question I have. Question I have is why is that on the Elite League social media channel? Well, why? Why is it? I don't. I don't get it. Because you've then. Well, why? I don't. I, I really don't get it. Showing what the Situation Room can no, do. No, but then surely you should show every other incident. Oh, yeah, no, but our, our, our goal that wasn't yeah. tonight, that that wasn't an incident. That was a no goal. So what class is as, as an incident? Well, that goal was given, so perhaps that makes a difference. So a goal given is an incident? Yeah, a, a goal given probably that was contentious and reviewed well, is maybe why the goal was given. I suppose if it had been contentious while it was not given, then they may have put something else out. I'd, I'd well... I, 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 believe me, I can see where you're coming from. It's... I can see where you're coming from, but I suppose it has to be the situations w- that might cause controversy. There was no controversy over that no goal no. in Nottingham tonight because it was no goal. No. And, and nobody was bothered about it, to be honest. None of the players looked yeah, like yeah. they were contesting the, uh, the decision that the officials reached. I think the only reason that uh, the referees went to review it is because the goal, the goal judge put his, yeah, yeah, the goal yeah. judge put his light on. Yeah. I think that's the, literally the only reason why that got reviewed. Oh, on tonight? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I just... I don't know. I think that's a very. No, no, I mean, it's it's it's, it's the right. It's a, it's going in the right direction, but I think you've got to be very careful of how that. Well, no. Is I mean, this is, this is the kind of thing. I mean, Tom Darnell used to do it. He used to do clarification of goals on his on his Twitter page. He used to, yeah. you know, if, if if there was something that happened in a game that he was refereeing and the, and it was it. And there was some sort of contention, or you know, perhaps yeah. he was getting a, lo- a load of tweets about why didn't you give that penalty, yeah, or yeah. why did you give that yeah. penalty, and blah blah blah. So, so, so that, so that I've, no, <laughs> I've, I, I tend to just yell at him, I yell at referees on the ice, I don't abuse them on Twitter anyway. So, so in, in this case, it, it's, it's about education, yeah, it's not necessarily that you're showing people things that are happening yeah. in the game it's about educating yeah. fans so that 
that, so that the so that the issues are less contentious. So next time something like that happens. So perhaps you know you get five, yes. five, five or ten people looking at that and going, oh well, you know, goaltender was out of his crease, so you know, it's fair game, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. You know, if it, yeah. you know, and, and people know the difference yeah, for next yeah. time. Yeah. So it's more, I think it's more about education than it is about specifically showing incident contentious incidents. I get that, and I totally agree with that. So my thing on this whole referee development and so far like is why don't we mic the refs up? All right. So when it's so they can say, yeah, no, so, well, no, I would agree with that. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, right, it goes to, so for use tonight, for example, they went to review a goal, well, or no goal, basically. Mm. Why do they not come out? They're mic'd up and they go, no goal due to the fact that it didn't go in, I, basically. Well, I, I think so, that's, that, well, that's the technology thing, isn't it? That doesn't very. It, it, it doesn't. That, co- that, it doesn't cost that, a lot. That, 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 well, yeah, I'm yeah, sorry yeah, for an elite yeah. league at the level that we are now. We should be able to uh, there afford. There are still some teams who don't use goal line technology That's every night. League. This is the problem. No, that this is, is an elite problem. league cost. Elite league cost. You, you, you might your lead ref or whatever you want to. However, you, or might both ref up. I, I don't know how they work the rest it, of the It doesn't cost a lot. A Senna has said it's the yeah, cost exactly. 300 quid. To put a radio mic on a, on a ref and go, right, no goal due to and the fact that the puck didn't enter the crew, whatever yeah, but, you want to call yeah, it. Yeah, but, all right, let, let me ask you this, right? Yep. Can you see the five flyers paying for that? No, you pay it as a league. Because as a league, that's how you should be represented. Because how many leagues? Well, you've still in got, but you still got to work in conjunction with the rinks that you work in that, that you, you that play does, in. No, 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 that's no. no, you, don't you, cost no a wireless because it's something. a wireless system, so it you just you, yeah, it's an XLR input. You're it's dead about easy. A grand. Yeah, a grand, less than that. Well, I just mean a, a grand for the league to pay. Mm. You know, it's not. A, it's not a lot. It's, it's, it's easy to do. But if you're going to do this like online, where social media proves whether it was a goal or not a goal, then I don't get why, in every other league then, you know, a lot of leagues, you get the ref calling out live, whether it's a goal, no goal, what the call was, why we can't do the same. Go on, peace. Yeah, l- l- let's move on. Um, <laughs> but the IHA have, have put in safeguarding team orders so that all live streams are to be seized that involve junior players. So this is... Inc- uh, pertinent to me as it includes the Nottingham Lions stream that me and Chris Gadsby have done since the start of the season Um, so no more Lions streams uh, which has been going very very well in between sort of a thousand and two thousand people watching and for me I think they're using a sledgehammer to crack a nut it seems a bit odd um, because something like this means that a particular team and even the league it's associated with are making strides. Um, I mean, <laughs> I mean for, for the Nottingham team in the NIHL to be providing a stream and the team in the Elite League to not be providing a stream, I mean, that, that that's, that's a bone of contention in itself for a lot of ice hockey fans. But it just seems overkill. If you've, if you've got a team that has got some kids on it that parents don't want their you know their kids on the stream then you don't show that team but i don't see any reason for just blanket cancer it, it's overkill i mean i i work it, it part part of my job is to do with safeguarding and i and, and i think this is just bonkers it's it, it's it's unnecessary you know if you you need you need to balance progress with keeping people safe i get that I, and but to it's lazy it's, it seems a little bit lazy because there are ways that you can you can do this and and you can, i mean it, it, I, yeah i just i can't i can't quite fathom fathom my head around it because it just doesn't it just doesn't seem it just doesn't seem logical. It, it just just really seems like a massive backward step. Yeah. Uh, and that's the thing for me, a, a backward step, because we, we, we've been providing a free stream which showcases the league, showcases the teams at that level, showcases the players at that level, that people can watch for free on a Sunday night 
uh, and then watch again uh, afterwards because the, it's a YouTube stream yeah, that stays yeah. up. And I, I get there's vulnerable children out there, and it's absolutely right that they should be protected. But surely the common sense way of dealing with this is at the start of the season when there's a, a registration just saying, do you agree for your yeah. child yeah. if they're under 16 yeah. to, to be shown on a, on a live stream? Yes or no? Signature. Job done, Job surely. Done. Job done. I think, you know, I'm, I'm, I only know certain bits about this. You know, I've seen what you've said on, on Twitter, John, <laughs> and I completely agree with what you're saying about the fact that it seems like, you know, the, the, the governing body are taking a, a sledgehammer to crack a nut. Um, you know, GDPR is a big issue now throughout society. You know, I see it in my job. You know, Tina said that she sees it in her job. Look, you know, there are some pretty big penalties for, you know, falling foul of the GDPR laws and regulations. But, you know, there seems to be easy ways around this. And you just outlined one in terms of at the start of the season when a player wants to register to play ice hockey. Mm. You know, you get their parents or their guardians' consent, um, you know, that they can be filmed, mm. you know for the purpose of showing a game of ice hockey. You know, why hasn't that been looked at in more detail? I, I don't understand it. You know, maybe the governing bodies are still finding it a bit difficult to come to terms with the GDPR regulations. Fair enough, if that's the case. We're all in a bit of a, an unknown uh, world as far as that's concerned. But, you know, it, it just seems so draconian to me. And it's, it's just depriving people of being able to see ice hockey. And ultimately, if we want the sport of ice hockey to grow, we want as many people as possible to see it. You know, especially through, uh, you know, new forms of media and, like, looking it over webcasts and, and you know, live, uh, live coverage of the games, as, you know, you and Chris Gasby have done for the Lions this season. So I just think it's a really retrograde step, personally, that, you know... Uh, we're, we're putting obstacles in the way and barriers in the way of, of people, be it you know family or friends of the players that are involved, of actually seeing these games. So you know, I just I hope there's a happy resolution to all this because there's been a lot of a lot of anger and a lot of uh, you know a lot of um, negativity around this uh, this new change of approach. But you know, we want people to see ice hockey. We want people to be able to watch it. Whether you're a family member or whether you're a friend, let, let's see let's see people playing ice hockey. Uh, and otherwise, you know, why are we all involved in it? And why are you involved in it, Jono? Because it just seems to be a really backward step. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I'm sure the ramifications from this will continue yeah. because the backlash on social yeah. media has been quite severe. Well, incredibly severe, to be honest. Uh, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll finish off with. This coming week, of course, is an elite league break uh, for some oh, teams. Yeah, for some for teams, <laughs> for some teams, not for everybody, but for some teams, as Team Great Britain go into the Olympic qualifiers here at the NIC. Uh, Thursday they take on Romania, Saturday Estonia, and Sunday against Hungary to get a place in the next round of the Olympic qualifiers. And I think we're all going to that, aren't we? Oh, Aaron's not going. Trigger's not going. <laughs> and uh, of course if you can't get down to the NIC free sports will be showing all the games live where are we watching mm. <laughs> and, and actually this might be this might be a good uh, good time to just sort of you know promote and you know help our friends at free sports by just mentioning that they now have an app Yes. Um, both on Android and uh, Apple platforms. Oh. So uh, that oh. one, t- but just just oh. get it downloaded. People. It's like Sally Mary. Oh, <laughs> my God, do I like yeah. that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, free sports app. So if you don't get, I don't. You should have said that. Really. I should have done, but With your did. contacts. You should have said that. Well, hmm. I've heard the interview is bloody great next week. <laughs> <laughs> Tina, tune in. But yes, all all on free sports. So a a big Olympic qualifying competition at the NIC. Are we looking forward to it? I am. Mm, Yeah, it'd be nice to see some international hockey. Uh, You (laughs) You get to be distracted by my daughter for all three games. (laughs) I'm on child mining duties. (laughs) Um, No, I mean, I'm looking forward to it because, um, you know, let's ride the wave of positivity after what we did last year you know as a hockey nation and you know I, 
I think we are the favourites of this tournament. You know, we're staging it, so High, highest ranked in the we tournament. We are the highest ranked by, 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 by a uh, and that's knacker. Yeah, yeah, okay, <laughs> but you know, I'm sure Hungary might want to get one over on us after. Yeah, what I mean, happened, that, that's uh, a big game. That's obviously the last game on yeah. Sunday against Hungary, which is expected to be decided. Which is the way the double IHF do yeah, these yeah, things yeah. is they always well, put what is likely to yeah. be the the sort of deciding game yeah. on on the last one. However, Estonia. And I know a lot about their youngsters having covered them uh, the last couple of seasons. They are a, a very good side with yeah. very quick transition and breakout. Yeah, I mean, it, look, it's great to see a little bit of different hockey, isn't it? You know, because we're all we're all caught up in watching the same teams in the Elite League most weeks, and we know how certain sides play and certain players play. So, you know, something a bit new, something a bit fresh. Uh, you know, seeing GB play, so you know we can. We can ride the Brexit wave and all be very. No, <laughs> I'm a Remainer, by the way. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, look, it, it's good to see the national team play. Um, I hope we get through. I really do. Look, I mean, in terms of our progression right the way through to the final tournament, it's very slim. You know, even yes. if we win, even if we win this tournament next weekend. The you chances are, another, there's yeah, there's another still another qualifying round to get through, and the chances are we are going to struggle massively to make it to the, the Winter Olympics. But you know, let, let's just appreciate the fact that GB are turning out on Nottingham Ice, and we can see some of our guys and you know some of the other Brits that ply their trade in the league, and it'd be nice. And hopefully, you know, we can all get behind the Brit guys and uh, hopefully cheer them on to three wins. Tina, Brendan Connolly, Great Britain forward, discuss. <laughs> I love Brendan Connolly. I'll be quiet. Um, <laughs> um, Cypher Panthers. I'm, I'm just going to I'm just going to seg- segue on to something else. And, um, <laughs> yeah, all right. Um, Sorry, I threw you under the bus. Yeah, now. yeah, you did. You <laughs> did. I don't a No, see, see, the thing I had in my head that I was going to talk about was um, it's it's a bit of a shame about Robert Dowd quite frankly yeah absolutely because that is a big big miss yeah big time I mean I, I'm, I'm not saying I, I, I cheered his injury because that uh, no I, I absolutely did not um, but it, it does make it sort of handy to a bit a little a little bit less stressful to play against the Steelers when he's not on the ice but obviously you know you, when you're missing Robert Dowd out of GB then that, that's a problem I mean the Steelers have been you know, probably feeling that problem a little bit because they've been you know, missing him from their team and um, I mean they've done all, they, they seem to have done you know, alright without him I suppose but um, he's, he's, he's a miss he is a big miss definitely um, but you know <laughs> Pete Russell and his team of uh, his team of coaches uh, Corey yeah, yeah Corey Nielsen and uh, Adam, Adam Keith Keith's yeah. still involved um, they've, they've done great things with the, the GB team so far so let's let's just enjoy enjoy the ride basically mm. so, so first game on Thursday uh, is 7.30pm face off and then Saturday and Sunday are 6pm face offs tickets still available at the NIC so get down if you can right I think that's about it because we've been going quite a while it's gone quite quickly but a lot to talk about so all that remains to say is one thank you very much to you for listening if you have and thank you very much to Aaron Lord thank you very much Jono Trigger Adam Reddish pleasure as ever and Tina Taylor TTFM and from me John Bullard thank you very much and we'll speak to you again next week ta ra